here we are with part four of the contract. This will more than likely be five or six parts because I have thought about the ending, but I just don't want to skip to the ending, okay? I, I want to get so Tiara and Paul are embracing and locked into a passionate kiss child when suddenly Tiara hears behind her. <clears throat> So she she shocked and she whips around, and standing in the doorway is this heavier set man, and he he has a martini glass, and uh, then the man speaks and says, "Well, well, 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 what do we have here?" And so then Paul um, lets go of Tierra and says, "Georgia," and that's when Tierra looked closely, and sure enough. The woman who was at her audition with the blonde wig is really a man. And so, um, Tierra kind of adjusts herself and she's like, um, hi, Miss Georgia. And that's when, uh, Georgia, Georgia kind of walked closely to her and said, oh, honey, anyone who's seen me without my lashes can call me by my government name. It's Samuel. So, you know, he reaches out and shakes her hand and but they've already met and so uh he's whisking around with his martini glass and he's like oh well paul so this is your new project huh and so um paul's like you've been drinking a little too much georgia so he takes the martini glass out of out of uh what's his name child um we're not gonna call him samuel let's give him richard rich is a good queen name honey <laughs> Richard takes the martini glass out of Richard's hand and he said, I think you've had enough to, um, for tonight. And um, Richard's like, okay, we'll see about that. So Richard then goes up the flight of stairs and then that's when Paul turns around and says, Richard stays over every now and then. Uh, I just keep an eye on him. I miss Richard go up to his room or one of the guest bedrooms and that's when Paul turns around and he said, look, I respect you. I respect your wishes to want to wait until you get mad married. I'm not going to press you to do anything. So if you want, we can end it tonight. End it, you know, right now. And, um, you know, but what I would like to do is keep this up. And she's like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, I don't like really sharing. So can we, like, make this official? And she's like, you mean, like, you want to go steady? And Paul's like, you young girls, yes, if you want to go steady. She's like, she's like, yeah, um, I mean, if you're okay with us not having sex. And so he's like, he looks at her, he's like, yeah, I'm okay with that. So, um, they embrace in the hug and he's like, okay, I'll make sure to get my driver to drop you off at home. Um, and then I'll check in w with you in a couple of more hours to make sure you got home okay. So, Tierra looks at him and, you know, her heart is swelling. She hasn't been this happy in years, you guys. Her last relationship was like four or five years ago and that ended abruptly because she found out the guy was cheating on her. And so, to be in a relationship with a grown man, this is in her head, is exciting and new for her, especially someone of this caliber, someone like Paul, who has has his own company, his his own person, you know, he's wealthy and all of this. So um, she gets dropped off at home and when she gets there, sure enough, her phone rings and it's Paul checking in on her to make sure that she made it home okay. And he's like, all right, sweetheart, I'll talk to you later. So she hangs up the phone and child, there go Brienne in the doorway eating her chips. She's like, well, hmm, looks like somebody's on cloud nine. <laughs> Tierra was like, she turns around, she's like, Brienne, you won't believe the night I've had. And so Brienne was like, well, speak, girl, I'm listening, I'm all ears. And so Tierra goes on and tell her about how, you know, Paul wooed her and asked for them to be official, you know, just girlfriend and boyfriend. And Brienne was like, okay, T, seems like y'all moving a little fast, but if you're happy, I'm happy, honey. So they start hanging out, meaning... Tierra and Paul start hanging out and dating. He's taking her to all of these restaurants and just places around LA that she's never been to, she's never been afforded to. He's introducing her to all of these people in the industry and she's really excited. Every now and then, then she sees Georgia, aka Richard, looking at her and slanting, slanting we're gonna call him, refer to, to him as a her. Um, she's slanting her eyes at 
uh, Tiara, but but in a girlish way, not malicious or anything. So, okay, you guys, so a couple of weeks go by, and Tiara, like I said, is on clout nine. This is a, an, just only a handful of relationships she's ever had, and she feels really good about Paul Wright. So she can hear Sharon, and Sharon is her manager, remember, at, at the club. She can hear Sharon in the back arguing with her, with someone saying, I'll get it to you. I promise. Just give me a couple more weeks. This is Sharon, the manager of the cl of the club, right? And the club is called Octane, y'all. I said Ozone in, the, in part three. It's Octane. So anyway, Sharon said, I promise you, just give me a couple more weeks. I'll get it to you. And that's when she hears a voice saying, um, we've given you several chances. So if you have it now, I'll have no other choice. And sh the voice sounds familiar. But Tiara really can't tell who it is. So she goes ahead and pretend like she's going to the bathroom. And while as she peers in, she sees Sharon talking to Paul. And she thinks that's kind of odd. And so she hurries up and go to the bathroom. This is Tiara. And when she hears the door leaves, Tiara runs back out. She knocks on the door and she, she sees Sharon wiping tears from her eyes. And she's like, Miss Sharon, is everything okay? And so Sharon's, you know, getting herself together. She's like, oh, hi, Tierra, honey. Yeah, um, just a little business deal gone a little, you know, left. But I, I'll, I'll get it together. And that's when Tierra said, um, was that Paul I saw you talking to? And that's when Sharon looked up. And Tierra could see that her eyes were puffy and red from crying. And she was kind of shaking some. And so that's when Tierra was like, is everything okay, Miss Sharon? And she's like, you know, Paul? She's like, yeah, we're dating now. And so that's when Sharon had a look of concern on her face. She's like, you mean you're dating Paul? And so Tierra was like, yeah, um, I'm dating him. Is, is that okay? She's like, oh, honey, I don't care who you date, but, you know, it's your business. And so Tierra was like, Okay, and so Sharon's getting her stuff together again. She's like, you know, honey, thank you for checking on me, but I promise, you know, everything's okay. And so as Tierra's leaving the office, then Sharon um, calls out and say, hey, T, and Tierra turns around. She's like, yes, ma'am. She said, whatever you do, honey, just make sure you be careful around Paul. He's not the person who you think he is. And so Tierra was like, what is that supposed to mean? And so Sharon just again reiterated just be care careful sweetheart okay and so Tierra was like okay she took it as is she goes out you know to the to the club and she sees Brienne and she tells Brienne what happened Brienne was like girl you know Sharon is just full of it where is she tried to holler at Paul a while back and he um he didn't accept her. He like clowned her. So maybe she's jealous of you since you were a young thing and you were able to take to um, get Paul. And Tiara was like, I don't know, Brienne. She seemed really upset and upset and shaking, like almost like she was afraid of him. And that's when Brienne was like, of oh, Paul, for afraid of him, honey. My left leg could, <laughs> my left leg could take out Paul. There is nothing to be afraid of. So she's like. Understand Sharon, like I said, she has all these debt problems, so she's spooky as it is and paranoid. I wouldn't listen to that woman. So Tara was like, okay, but she still was thinking about that, you know, as the week going along. So, all right, y'all, going fast forward, it's a couple of days. So she's over at Paul's house, and there the phone rings. Rosa, the housekeeper, comes in and says, Um, uh, senior senior Paul phone call. <laughs> I ain't got no accent, girl. I can't do no Latino accent. Senior Paul phone call. So Paul walks away to get the call. And so when Tierra is in the um in the kitchen by herself, and that's when uh she tries to make small talk talk with Rosa, because Rosa's there preparing dinner and she's just standing there and she's like, Mmm, that shit does smell good, Miss Rosa. What are you cooking? And that's when Miss Rosa turns around. She's like, Oh Miha. You favor chastity so much. I thought you were chastity. And that's when, you know, Tierra was like, chastity? Who's chastity? And Miss Rosa looked a little uneasy. And she said, chastity was Paul's um, previous wife. And Tierra was a little confused. She's like, I didn't know Paul was married. What happened to her? She's like, oh, accident accident and then she started you know blurbing out something in Spanish and she walks away you know saying something on her breath and Tierra was a little Tierra was a little confused 
she's like you know her and Paul have been sharing everything about her life and she would have thought that by now that he would have you know let her know about him being married before so she was like hmm so you know they go ahead and have dinner and you know Tierra decides to bring it up right so she's like you know um I was in the kitchen earlier talking to Rosa and she mentioned that I favored your wife I didn't know you were your ex-wife I wasn't aware that you were married and that's when Paul's eyes kind of darken and he look at her he's like Rosa told you that and she's like yeah I mean is that something I wasn't supposed to know and he looks at her and then his whole demeanor changes again right he's like no no that's okay um it's just that you know it's just something I don't want to talk about and she's like well I felt the whole point of us being together is to get to know each other and to share information he's like yeah 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 I I understand that baby but you know it's just not something it's, it's something that really really hurt me is he's a yeah, I'm saying that baby but you're absolutely right so Paul goes on to explain to her how his first wife they were only married for two years and unfortunately she died in a boating accident um they were on his yacht she um fell off the side and she drowned and they never found her again and Tiara is sitting here like oh my god and she could see tears in Paul's eyes and she goes over to console him she's like oh my god I'm so sorry I should have never have brought this up I had no idea he said no it's okay it's okay and that's when he leans in closer to her and he starts to you know kiss her again and she's like okay Paul you know I really really do like you but and then that's when Paul looks at her. He's like, Tiara, for me, it's more than that. I think I'm in love with you. That's when Tiara was like, you love me? And he's like, yes, I love you. The from the minute I saw you, I knew that you were it for me. And Tiara was taken aback. And like, she's never had a man like full on, you know, say these things to her. So she doesn't know what to say or think. And so... Um, she goes back, you know, she gets back set her into her seat and they finish dinner. All right. Okay, so she leaves and go home, y'all. And she, you know, just thinking about how this accident happened, right? You know, Tiara lets it brush off. You know, everyone has their secrets and she knows she has hers. But something like that, she would have thought, again, that by now he would have let her know that he had been married. Um, and that his wife died and, you know, was presumed dead, right? So they continue dating y'all. Um, and she just finds herself falling heads over hill over Paul. He whines and dines her, gives her whatever she wants. Um, no expense, you know, so he's able to buy her whatever she wants. Not that she asked for anything, but he gives her these lavish gifts every now and then just to show how much he loves her. So again... They're at over at his house and um, Miss Georgia is their child and she's been drinking a couple of martinis. Now they're all having dinner at this point. So then Richard is finally like, so Paul, how long do you plan on keeping this one around? Referring to Tiara and Tiara turns around, she's like, excuse me? And so he said, yes, honey, you're his newest project. Paul is known for taking innocent little things like you and turning them into his trophy wife and so um paul is like watch it georgia getting real stern and so uh tiara can see the same look in his face and paul's face when she brought up his marriage his first marriage and so georgia's like oh paul you know i'm just playing with you throwing back the martini still so he gets up, child, and gets a little uneasy. And that's when, you know, Tiara gets up and she kind of balances him. And he's like, uh, she's like, oh, my God, are you okay? He's like, oh, honey, can you take me? Can you help me to my room? And so Tiara's like, okay, yeah, I, I can help you. So she's, <laughs> he's a big man. And so she's kind of helping him go along and um she's like well i don't know if i can help you up the stairs he's like oh honey that's okay sugar you know you can lay me in the um in the um living room you know i'll just lay on the couch for a minute so they go into the couch and lay down and then as she lay down he looks at her and that's when he says to tiara he's like you look so much like chastity is scary so y'all okay 
So they, you know, are doing good, hanging out, and um, Paul decides he wants to take Tierra on a vacation, right? So they go to Hawaii for a week. Tierra has never left the U.S., let alone Hawaii. Granted, Hawaii is still the U.S., meaning she's never been on an airplane or anything. Everything she's done is by bus. So they go to Hawaii. They're there having a good time. Then one night they are um, uh, having dinner and Paul goes on to say, you know, Tierra, you know, these last few months have been absolutely amazing. You have made me a happy man, happiest than I've been in a very long time. And I know that we haven't, you know, known each other that long, but I figured we have the rest of our lives to get to know each other. That's when Paul starts getting down on one knee. Tierra, excuse me, Tierra's like, Oh my God, her heart is racing. She can feel her hand shaking. She's like, Paul, what are you, what are you so doing? That's when Paul gets, you know, reaches into his pocket, gets out a small ring box and open it. He's like, would you be the honor of making me the happiest man and marry me? So Tierra is kind of, she knew she felt, had strong feelings for Paul, but she didn't know if it was love. And so she looks and she's like, yes 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 so he smiles he gets up off his knees shout they hug and embrace kiss go back to the hotel room now they had gotten separate hotel rooms because again paul wants to respect her they do not sleep sleep in the same room right so um because again she's saving herself a marriage so she's so excited and um uh as they're going back, flying back to the States, Tierra cannot wait to share the news with Brianne and Sharon and all of, and everybody. So as soon as she gets back to the club, she goes in, they see the ring. Sharon notices the ring before anybody. And so Sharon is like, what is that on your ring, Tierra? I mean, what is that on your hand, Tierra? And Tierra, she's so excited. Y'all, what it Child, this is this is a Chanel bottle. <laughs> this is a wedding. That's how big the damn ring. She's like, oh my gosh, Sharon, you won't believe it. Paul flew, you know, flew us out to Hawaii and he proposed marriage. That's when Sharon face looked like absolute horror terrified. She's like, Are you serious? Are you sure? It seems so soon, sweetheart. And Tiara, now she's a little, she's like, you know what? I guess I'm sure. And Brienne told me that you had a thing for him a while back. So I can understand if this is <clears throat> a shocker to you, but I'm absolutely sure about Paul. And so Sharon looks at her, she's like, oh, sweetheart, you have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. So Sharon said, you know what? I'm gonna give you something. And I, and I think you should talk to someone before you decide to walk down the aisle with this band. So that's when she writes down a name and she writes down um, Sierra Medical Ward. And so she looks at it and the name is Mary Winthrop, Sierra Medical Ward. And she's like, who is this? And who is this Mary Winthrop? And so that's when Sharon said, that's Paul's mother. And she's like, I thought Paul's mother died and like committed suicide. She's like, yeah, Paul tells that to everyone. So if I were you, you may want to speak to her before. And so Tierra's was like, oh my God. So she takes the sheet of paper, stuffs it in her pocket. That's it for part four, y'all.